Today, the world of missiles ranges from giant ICBMs to slim rockets fired by supersonic fighters to the small handheld weapons steered by a lone foot soldier but capable of knocking out a main battle tank. There are automated weapons protecting the biggest warships against air attack and cruise missiles, which are really unpiloted bombers. Missiles are used by every modernized Army, Navy, and Air Force in the world. This missile is the TOW. TOW stands for tube-launched, optically tracked, and wire-guided missile. It is the West's most important anti-tank missile, and there may well be more TOWs than any other type of missile in the world. Hughes Aircraft has delivered over 400,000, and production is continuing. The TOW is a hefty missile weighing about 45 pounds, cumbersome but not too heavy for use by infantry. TOWs are carried by jeeps, hummers, cargo trucks, and marine LAVs. Employed as the main anti-tank weapon of the Bradley Infantry Combat Vehicle, it can also be mounted on the Cobra, the Apache, and Britain's Westland Lynx. The operator simply acquires the target through a scope that has been boresighted exactly parallel to an optical sensor. In this simulated combat footage, filmed through the gunner's sight, the deadly effectiveness of a helicopter launch tow is evident. The target is destroyed even though it's moved for cover. The missile is fired from its tube by a quick burn rocket and coasts until it's far enough from the operator for the main rocket to ignite. At the same time, a bright light appears in the missile's tail facing astern. As long as the operator keeps his sight on the target, the light is automatically kept exactly on course. Steering commands generated in the optical sensor are automatically transmitted along fine wires trailed behind the missile. Crosshairs in the telescope provide the operator with perfect aim. This is the eye toe, or improved toe. It uses exactly the same launch equipment as a standard tow, but has an extensive nose probe, which provides optimum detonation distance between warhead and enemy armor. I-Tow became operational in 1981. Today, the newest version is the Tow 2. This is a second generation missile. It is heavier and has a new and more powerful warhead a more powerful flight motor, a thermal beacon, and a new night sight. TOW 2A, now coming into service, has tandem warheads to defeat reactive armor. Planned for production within the coming decade, the TOW 2B flies over its target and fires its warhead downwards. Both versions can be used over extended ranges by day or night and from a wide range of launchers. Has several European counterparts. These gazelles are carrying four to six HOT missiles. The HOT, or HOT, gets its name from a French acronym meaning high subsonic speed, optically guided, and tube launched. Each HOT missile weighs 50 pounds. Again, the operator sights the crosshairs of his magnifying optics on the target. Like tow, hot spins for flight stability as it reels out the fine guidance wires. During hot training on a practice range, operators quickly learn how to master the missile control panel and its joystick controller. A veteran gunner can put five missiles through the same hole in the target. HOT fits on various land vehicles. 
including West Germany's Jaguar tank destroyer. The UTM-800 on Panhard armored cars. And the Lancelot turret of the French AMX-10P. One of the cheapest and simplest anti-armor missiles is the Swedish Carl Gustav. This simple and robust handheld system fires an 84-millimeter rocket. It is in service with over 40 armies and has proven its effectiveness in combat. Carl Gustav was originally designed exclusively as an anti-tank weapon. Today, it exists in various forms, capable of firing different kinds of projectiles. The biggest round is the heat high-explosive anti-tank round. Other projectiles include high explosives, smoke, flare, and practice warheads. Though the heat round weighs only seven pounds, it can destroy a main battle tank. It rides in the barrel on a ring of Teflon, reducing the rapid spin imparted by the rifling of the inner bore. Here, an engagement between a Carl Gustav team and a tank is seen from the point of view of both the infantryman and the doomed tank. Probably the most numerous European tactical missile is the Milan. It is made by the same team as HOT, Aerospatial of France and MBB of Germany. A firing post can be set up by two men in a matter of seconds. One trooper carries the firing post and the other two missile tubes. When the post is ready, a tube is locked on by a simple rear-to-front pushing action. This secures the electrical connections. The operator can then sight and fire. The missile weighs 14.8 pounds. Like hot, it uses automatic infrared tracking and wire guidance. The Milan-shaped charges warhead can slice through armor like a hot knife through butter. It made a name for itself during service with the British Army in the Falklands. Designing a portable anti-tank missile system light enough for infantry use isn't easy. The design of armor has become more sophisticated, and the warhead large enough to penetrate the thick frontal plates of a modern battle tank can be unacceptably heavy. Infantry often have to wait until the tanks have passed through their position. Then they can tackle the lighter side and back armor. But that's an extremely dangerous tactic. So some designers have reasoned that it makes sense to attack the thinner armor on top of the tank before it passes through the lines.